How y'all doing? It is Monday, 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 June 20th, 2022 AD. Hope you had a happy Father's Day, all fathers. Happy Father's Day, belated. Uh, happy Juneteenth observed. It's 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Daylight Time here in Los Angeles. Going to have a, a fun Monday show, I hope. I have quite a bit of coverage, stop me if it's too much, of the El Monte police. Uh, you know how my buddy was killed? Murdered, allegedly, last week. Uh, my buddy from the El Monte Police Department. I, get, I don't know if you would call him my buddy to this day, but uh, I think we liked each other. And so I'm going to cover that. The, the mother of the other officer, a little bit of on the other officer who was murdered, uh, you know, allegedly it was an ambush, according to some. And uh, I have the, the, wife, the purported wife or ex-wife or girlfriend or whatever of the, the dirt bag, the scumbag, the piece of you-know-what, who allegedly killed those cops. And uh, I went to the vigil on Saturday, candlelight vigil. I don't normally really like those things. I don't like the idea of them. They're kind of contrived. But, you know, the candles in person, it's the candles are nice. As dusk comes or it's twilight or darkness comes. And I'm going to show you that Florida gay teacher, not morally straight teacher, who's lamenting having to keep his kindergartners at arm's length. <laughs> he didn't use those words. It was a female writer who used those words, and apparently her editor mo removed that from the website. <laughs> it's from a few months back. You know, the Florida's so-called don't say gay bill. Uh, and I have a funny quote that I mentioned in Hake News about Saudi Ara from Saudi Arabia. They're removing all rainbow paraphernalia, <laughs> including, like, Crayola crayons, which Crayola is not exactly morally straight either. And hopefully I will get to this... Title IX, Patsy Mink thing. Patsy Mink was a female congressman from Hawaii, and so she looks kind of Asian. Reminiscent of, you know, that lady, and I use the term lo loosely, who said, Maisie Hirono, who said, men, just shut up and step up and do the right thing for, the cha for a change. <laughs> um, this lady co-wrote this Title IX thing, anti-discrimination, putting women in in education, and girls, and sports, it makes me want to spit. <laughs> All that and your calls, you can call in, guys. But anyway, let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hank Report, the Hank Report, la, la, la. So, how are you guys doing? I am fine. Shout out to the Facebook crew, the faithful few. And by the way, somebody said I was wearing a boring shirt because <laughs> it's just blue. It's getting, kind of getting lost in the TV background over here. Uh, somebody suggested I change my background. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of the Facebook crew, over there on Bond Rebuilding the Man on the live church services, Sundays. Consider this. You can go over there and do the live chat for free if you're too cheap or too much of a boomer and don't understand how to join. <laughs> Although you should figure it out, we can help you. <laughs> Give me a call and I'll help you, walk you through it if you're a, a boomer or... I understand being a boomer. I'm sometimes a boomer with tech as well. Boomer tech. And, uh... Nick helps me out. <laughs> to join in, to join as a channel supporter on the Bond YouTube channel if you want to join the snake pit. But I kind of like on the church services, live church with Jesse Lee Peterson. I'm the producer. 
I made it so that on the YouTube live chat, only members, paying members as channel su- Bond Rebuilding the Man channel supporters can join into the live chat. Cleans up the snake pit. Honestly, the live chat is distracting. You know, when you're, try- when you're supposed to be paying attention in church, rather than chatting and talking and talking mess. I want to say talking other words, but yeah. So, that's cool. Uh, you can do that. Or if, you can, if you're too cheap or too much of a boomer, you can go to the Facebook.com slash Rebuilding the Man and chat for free. <laughs> anyway, I have an update on the El Monte Police Department. You know, a couple of, a couple of cops were killed. Something like 50 plus or minus 30 Maybe it's more like 60 plus or minus 30, uh, roughly, cops get murdered or killed, I think by gunfire, but in the line of duty every year. And I heard last year it was up 40% from the year prior. Thanks, BLM. Thanks, Obama, Biden. <laughs> and the mainstream media uh, and the phony politicians and the uh, soft on crime, hard on the hard on the cops, hard on the whites, tying their hands behind their backs. No more chokeholds. Come on, bring back the chokeholds. Be a man. We need men running the show. Men of the the local men are supposed to protect the community, not just the cops, but the cops too, I guess. But no, now it's backwards. They enforce liberal politicians. Mask and shut down. I guess that's kind of old news, but what a mess. So I went to the candlelight vigil for my friend, my late friend on Saturday. I'll tell you about it in a sec. But let me tell you, let me play this clip 13. I went, I meant to play this on Friday because this is a report from like Thursday or so. The mother of the other cop who was killed. My friend was Michael Paredes. High school buddy. I ran cross country with him. And this other cop was 31 years old. His stepdad was a long, is a long time cop over there in El Monte. And his mother is, spoke out. And she spoke out against this Gascon guy. This trashy guy whom ne- the Netflix CEO and his philanthropist wife and George Soros all donated millions of dollars between the between the three of them and BLM endorsed her this guy this Cuban ex-republican <laughs> George Gascon who looks white but don't be fooled not on the inside black evil heart on the inside phony both families too both families of these cops agreed to uh, blaming Gascon in part because uh, this guy who this dirtbag scumbag was out on parole and he didn't he need he needn't not be have he needn't not have been anyway here's this little three minute well it's kind of I call it little but three minute kind of long clip from the mother she's all crying bear with us right all right mother can cry a little bit even if it's on TV here it is uh, mother says a slain El Monte officer was living his dream it's an NBC LA report here it is oh yeah 13 is it there Okay, Down cool. to our top story, those memorials for those officers who were killed in El Monte. nbc 4s Lauren Coronado is live outside the El Monte police station tonight with reaction from the mother of one of those officers. Lauren? Chuck, Colleen, I want to show you just how large this memorial has grown in support of those families whose officers are now being remembered. You could see the row of flower arrangements. Now, Officer Santana's mother tells me her son was living out his dream, married to his high school sweetheart, a father of three, and proudly serving his hometown as an Almane police officer. It's like a piece of my heart is gone. It's never going to come back. Olga Garcia grieving the loss of her son, 31-year-old officer Joseph Santana. He was killed in the line of duty Tuesday alongside 42-year-old Corporal Michael Paredes, both with the El Monte Police Department. He was a good son, respectful, and everybody just loved him. 
his silliness, the things he would do and say. He was the middle child and had two sisters. Santana graduated from El Monte High School, where he played basketball, football, and met his wife. The high school sweethearts married and shared three children, a nine-year-old daughter and a pair of two-year-old twin boys. They were like the perfect family. And they were very united. They did a lot of things together. Garcia says her son followed in his stepfather's footsteps and became an El Monte police officer. He was on the force less than a year. His dream was to be an El Monte police officer. He wanted to work in the city where he grew up and give back to the city. A dream cut short. She says Santana wasn't scheduled to work Tuesday. He picked Crazy. up a shift and texted her the morning of the shooting. Six hours later, her life was flipped upside down. I saw online that they said that two police officers from Amani were shot, so I called my husband. I FaceTimed him. I said, are you okay? And he answered. Then I asked him, is Joseph okay? And his eyes were watering. I already had a feeling he was gone. Alas Garcia says she's trying to process. I feel like it's a bad nightmare and I'm going to wake up and it's all going to be the way it used to be, but it's not. Leaning on family and holding on to the memories. It makes me proud to know that they both made a difference in the community. And the Peace Officers Research Association of California is holding a fundraiser for the officers. And tomorrow, a news conference is planned here at the police department at 3 o'clock. Garcia says that her son and his family were supposed to be in Disneyland today, a trip they had planned for a little while. Reporting live in El Monte, Lauren Coronado, NBC4 News. Uh Jacob 34 says they made her wear a mask, <laughs> taking care of businesses. Why is she still wearing a mask? Now I don't feel bad for her. I'm talking about the mother of the, uh, of that Joseph Santana, the cop guy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was kind of muffled. There was a few people at that vigil who were wearing masks. You know, the older folks. Big Bump says Gascon is just as evil as that dirty cop killer. Yeah, it's a soft evil that is... Allowing for all this mess. Yeah, I ran cross country with one of those guys, Michael Paredes, not the not this younger guy who we just featured. But uh yeah, that soft evil. You know, it's like the mama type of evil. Oh, you know how you get punished and it's like, oh, this this doesn't seem fair for something not that bad that you did, but it's bad. Or maybe it is bad. Maybe it is that bad. But it's like, oh man, this is tough. Oh, gosh. You just made my life harder by getting, by punishing me for my crime or misdemeanor or whatever. And they say, oh, they were making life too hard for these criminals and these misdemeanor people. And they can't get back on track. It's, it's counterproductive. And there may be some truth to that, but, the, but never trust these types of people to implement it correctly. Soft evil, kind of like Hake's music, says Blark Blark. Indeed. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't even heard all of it. <laughs> uh, I chuckle, but yeah. Pretty, pretty sad, huh? What a mess. What a terrible mess. Let me actually show you. I'm laughing, but this is not, it's not good. Let me show you the, the wife, ex-wife, girlfriend, baby mama of this uh, killer. Uh, this is clip 12. I just heard about this yesterday. I'm so deeply sorry. The wife of the shooter who killed two El Monte officers speaks out because uh, some uh, Asian reporter tracked her down. This is from CBS Los Angeles. Uh, clip 12. Another three minutes or so. Bear with me. And she's all breaking down to her husband. Her husband or whatever he was got killed and she, look at her and her all her tattoos. This is her. The investigation into the shooting is extensive. CBS 2's Jeff Nguyen has been digging into who that suspect was and he's live with where he caught up with the suspect's wife. Jeff? 
Yeah, we certainly did, Pat. We spoke to her about an hour ago, and we were able to meet her as she was packing up her things at this motel right here. Speaking of the suspect's past, we were able to pull L.A. County court records, and they show that the suspect was on probation for a gun charge at the time of the shooting. That's my husband. <laughs> Chola. So you're Diana? Yeah. Yes. Diana Flores says she's the wife of the suspect in a deadly shootout. Cell phone video captured the barrage of gunfire on Tuesday during Crazy. a deadly gunfight. Two El Monte police officers were killed along with a suspect. Police were called to this motel for a stabbing attack. But it wasn't from yesterday, so it was a false call from yesterday. It had to be because I didn't get All stabbed right. yesterday. I got stabbed the day before that. She says her husband was Justin Flores. Criminal records show in 2009 he was sentenced to 16 months for vehicle theft. He served two months and he was discharged from parole in November 2010. The following May, he was sentenced to two years for first degree burglary. He was sentenced to 10 months and he was discharged from parole in August 2016. Arthur Kingsbury Man. says he heard gunfire as he drove by the Siesta Inn where the gunfight happened. I saw two police officers get out and try to run around their car to get cover and they were you know sliding around the ground and just trying to hide because they were getting shot at. Two family members told us Flores and his wife would often go to motels to get away from others. Flores' stepfather <laughs> said his wife got a call from her daughter-in-law after the shooting. She went to the motel where she was later questioned by investigators. One day after the shooting, the street in front of the motel reopened, the site where two officers were killed. I am so deeply sorry. My deepest condolences for saving me. I'm so, so, so sorry. They didn't deserve that or their families. They really didn't. They were trying to help me, and I told them before they went in the room, don't go in. He has a gun. And Diana Flores says that she had been staying at the motel for about a day after her husband attacked her. She says she was trying to get away from him, but he managed to track her down. Crazy. Uh, she said, I didn't get stabbed that day, the day that she called the stabbing thing in. Maybe she called the, so did she call the cops? She thought it was a false call. She called the cops and said, I've been stabbed, but she had actually been stabbed the day before and didn't call the cops. And then she called them and said, no tears, says man godson. And then so she did a false call. They should sue her. Not that she has any money, but uh, uh, charge her or something. Isn't that a crime, a false uh Call for uh, police? I don't know. So those two cops who were slide, sliding around, you know that witness who I'd, I'd seen his, that witness is the recording of that witness talking about, oh, I saw these cops, sli two cops, two officers sliding around behind their car trying to get away from the shooting. I had pictured that was Mikey and uh, Joseph, the guys, the two guys who got killed. But no, apparently not. I think that was other officers because those guys went into the, hotel according to the report and I don't think they ever got out of the hotel they were just shot and I don't know if they died they said that they died at the at the hospital but uh LA Times has a report about the details he kind of backed into the I heard that the that he shot through the door at them maybe he did maybe he backed into the uh the uh Bathroom inside the motel, dirty motel, sleazy motel, lots of drugs and prostitution at that siesta inn. She should pay for the funerals. <laughs> yeah. They were saying that Gascon was going to, his policy, according to uh, uh, Bill Malusian over at Fox News, that the, the policy of this DA is to pay for any one shot and killed by police, regardless of the circumstances. But apparently he turned the gun on himself after an off-duty officer shot him, according to what I was told by my buddy, who doesn't tend to give me fake news in regards with the facts, you know. My deepest condolences, she said, <laughs> by the way. Uh, English. It's condolences, lady.
and I use the term loosely, chola, total chola. I don't know, kind of cute, maybe. The, uh, here's the report from uh, Los Angeles Slimes, LA, LA Times. Trump hating LA Times, but they have some interesting info. The rookie and his training officer knocked, da- knocked on the door of an El Monte motel room where they'd been called to investigate a report of domestic violence, the stabbing. False report. And you know, women aren't that much of victims. I mean, they're, yeah, they're victims, but so are the males who they get in fights with, and then they get their face cracked or stabbed or whatever. I wonder where she got stabbed. Once they got the victim out of the room, she's all, don't go in there, he's got a gun, according to her. Once they got the so-called victim out of the room, this female, Diana Flores, Officer Joseph Santana went in, followed by his training officer, Corporal Michael Paredes, my buddy, cross-country teammate, high school. Justin Flores, the man inside, Justin William Flores, the white Hispanic, backed himself into the bathroom, law enforcement sources told the slimes. Within about 12 seconds, one, one source said, Flores ambushed the officers. And they use the word ambush, LA Times does, according to this anonymous source, with gunfire. Paredes went down first. Man. Both officers died of a gunshot wound to the head. So I don't know if he shot them through the door and then came out and and like executed them or what. Or maybe I should have held it sideways. But I don't know how this guy held it. The gun, you know. Somebody told me that he had a rifle. I don't know if that's true. I may have misheard. El Monte homegrown, said that Mayor Jessica Ancona, whom I talked a lot of mess about last week because she's all into the LGBT pride, El Monte against hate type stuff. I'm shaking my head at her. Uh, 4.30 p.m. last Tuesday, Paredes and Santana, unidentified sergeant, responded to the Siesta Inn. After they went down... Flores ran out of bullets and took a gun from one of the fallen officers. He left the room firing at the sergeant, who was also unidentified, but there. Flores, six foot two, 300 pounds, ran out into the parking lot. Other officers engaged him in a shootout, fell to the ground, but continued to fire at the officers, then shot himself as officers moved in. Man. Wow. Wow. What a waste, huh? And now he left behind, I think, a seven-year-old daughter, the, the suspect did. And, you know, the officers had two, three kids each themselves. And, and wi- actual wives. It's crazy. What a, what a mess. Paredes started right out of high school, I guess, with Michael. With a, as a cadet with the department. I mentioned that. July 2000, sworn in. So for 22 years. Dang, I didn't know 2000 was 22 years ago. Duh, we're in 2022. And the other guy, wife, wife daughter, and twin boys. Michael Praise had a, daughter, a son and a daughter. Uh, you know, let me play this. Let me play this vigil. You know what? Let me show these pictures. I went to the vigil on Saturday. I'll show you the pictures. And uh, big crowds. They said hundreds were expected and hundreds showed up. There were cop, uh, cops who were helping out. You know, I guess the whole department was like kind of in mourning. Because it's kind of rare for uh, cop killings to happen, supposedly. But man... Saturday evening, as uh, the sun set, sun went down. Show these pictures from, uh, like, uh, I, uh, just these photographs that I took from, uh, in the El Monte thing. These, look at that. Huge crap. That was nice to see it. Some woman preaching. The, uh, I'll show you, I'll play the clip. You'll hear, like, this relatives or in-laws of these people talking. 
American flags, uh, get rid of Gascon, uh, you know, political, uh, stuff. On the outskirts, it wasn't too, uh, un- you know, the families of the- vi- of these guys are in support of going after Gascon for this. So it wasn't too, like, in-your-face political. But, wow. And again, I don't really like the idea of candlelight vigils. It's all, like, emotional. And it was emotional. But, uh, it was, uh, it was nice. I don't know if the widows, you call them widows when they're that young? The wives of the, uh, killed cops? I don't know if they were there or not. One of them might have been. One of them may not have been able to keep it together. That's after they cleared out, after we cleared out. I saw my buddies from high school there. Oh, show them, show them, uh, my old cross country photos. I don't know if I showed, I showed some of my cross country photos of my, with my buddy, Mikey, but I don't know if I showed all of these ones. Look at me, that's, you see me way over there on the left? The only white guy, the whitest white guy. One of them, one of us, these guys was half white, half Hispanic. I mean, H- Hispanic is already part white. Mikey's the dark guy kind of in the middle, in the front. My buddy said, he looks like a cop. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, even right there in high school. That's us in like Stanford uh, Invitational back in like 1997, I guess it was. Maybe 96? Maybe it was 1996. Sophomore I went to Stanford? Sophomore year? Anyway, that's like San Francisco we went over there. Isn't that cute? My buddy, all goofy. Anthony in the middle. Mikey is way over on the left side. I'm way over on the... I guess that's me. I don't know why my eyes are so dark. But, uh... Anthony Solorzano, who's been on the show before. And AJ next to him in the middle. They wear, like, silly socks. Both those guys been on the show. AJ wrote my The Heek Report theme song. You know, the original The Heek Report theme song. Trevor Wesley did the, uh... The remake that I play Monday through Thursday. <laughs> anyway, let me play this vigil report. Here's uh, from ABC Seven, and then I'll be and they'll be done. I mean, you can you can call in about it. Uh, there's some calls about it, but let me just finish this up. Here's the nice little report on this vigil that took place uh, from ABC Seven, clip fourteen. Uh, what a mess! Here it is. Hundreds of members of the El Monte Police Department and members of the community gathering for a candlelight vigil to honor the officers killed this week in the line of duty. Eyewitness News reporter Irene Cruz is live in El Monte as tributes pour in for those two men tonight. Irene. Jory and Veronica, the vigil wrapped up just a bit ago. The once packed street has now cleared out, but people are still stopping by this memorial to pay tribute to those fallen officers. Amazing grace. Tonight, hundreds gathered at the El Monte Civic Center to pay their respects to two fallen officers, Officer Joseph Anthony Santana and Corporal Michael Domingo Paredes, who died earlier this week. Greeting nice. members of the El Monte community, holding each other close, shedding tears, and lighting candles in their honor. The brother-in-law of one of the officers read a letter written by Officer Santana's wife. I never knew this level of pain existed. Every inch of my body is broken missing you. Michael had a huge heart. Big hugs for everyone. And that perfect smile that he was known for by all. Tuesday yep. night, the El Monte police officers responded to a report of a stabbing at a siesta inn on Garvey Avenue. When they confronted the suspect in one of the rooms, gunfire broke out and the suspect, Justin Flores, shot the officers. The officers died at the hospital. We learned the suspect died by suicide at the scene. I'm a police officer myself. It's just... Almani resident ourselves. <laughs> it's just really hard. 
Family members of the officers have criticized Los Angeles County District Attorney George Gascon. The now dead suspect had a long criminal history, at least 19 cases in 16 years, including a felony charge for possession of a firearm and meth. Last year, he was given a plea deal that resulted in just two years of probation and only 20 days in jail. It's terrible. He should never have been let out. If he was in jail, he wouldn't have committed the crime. The DA has defended that decision, saying Flores didn't have a history of violence. Yeah, right. Somebody said, uh, somebody in the Odyssey chat said, uh, Gascon is a particularly evil communist. Dude has blood on his hands. Um, taking care of businesses. Three rules to survive. Stay home after dark. I do that now, for the most part. Stay out of motels and get a job. Uh, yeah, for the most part, although tch, it's crazy. You never know anymore. Getting worse, seems like. Uh, yeah, that female who was crying all squealy voiced, it was a cop, according to that uh, report. All upset. Shameful, huh? Anyway, uh, it is past the bottom of the hour. Let me get to a call. Um, William in California on the line. How are you doing, William? I'm doing all right, James. I'm very sorry about your friend there. Thank you. Yeah, Yeah, so am I. Read a little more about it. Uh, this weekend, and uh, which one was your friend? Was uh, was it Santana or Paredes? Paredes. 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 Okay. Paredes. <laughs> I knew him as Michael Paredes. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he was the 22 year veteran. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The other one that just got hired, I think. Yep. Right. And so your friend was on the he was on the force for quite a while. Looks like. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry that that happened, man. Uh, so close to home there. Yeah, I appreciate it. You, when you said you went to the uh, vigil. Yep, on Saturday evening. I heard about it gonna being going to happen, and so mm-hmm. I don't know if that's proper English, but I uh, I looked it up and decided to head over there. And I saw some friends afterwards, you know, toward the end of it. I saw some friends, mm-hmm. some actually kind of uh, in-law family members, Right. Walking towards it, and then uh, some of my buddies, some of whom were in those photos uh, over there talking about, you know, cross country friends and their parents showed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Well, hey, I imagine that uh, the soft on crime, he probably shouldn't have been out. Right. Yeah. He just had like a weapons, po- weapons yeah. possession charge, and according. I think something to do with the three strikes laws. He had a strike from over ten years ago. He like he like in burglarized his grandparents' home or home invaded, armed something, and maybe he stole a car, according to one report. And oh, yeah. Gascon has this policy of not enforcing the law that he's s- supposed to enforce. It's illegal for him not to enforce this, uh, you know, policy or or law. This three strikes thing. But he didn't do it right? anyway. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's, uh, according to what I've read, you know, he right. didn't, his, it was consistent with his policy of not enforcing the three strikes thing. Oh, the, the, this particular district attorney. Yeah, this Ga- George Gascon, L.A. County okay. D.A., who's okay. maybe facing a recall. We'll see. I. Oh, yeah, he's definitely, they're, they're recalling quite a few. Yeah, they they uh, recalled that yeah. son of the uh, communist terrorist up in uh up in the Bay Area in San Francisco. You know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah, that one that one was successful. They're gonna probably get the one across the bridge over in over in uh, Oakland. They're gonna probably get him and get oh, that one as well. Good. Um, and then they had somebody sprayed up in front of the sports bar after the NBA Finals the other night. Sprayed with so bullets, it, meaning. Yo, just sprayed up wow. him and his sister. Terrible. Some guy and his sister, you know, he's from San Fran. They say, I called some friends and I asked them, I said, is anybody we know with yeah. school with? And they said, no, no. I said, you know, they said, as far as we would know, it's just somebody from the city. And he went over to a sports bar over in Oakland, across the bridge, and 
uh, he never he didn't come back. He actually, I think I sent you some uh, surveillance footage of it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, that's too bad. Yeah, they're going to be recalling quite a few of these guys. Uh, I hope so. I yeah, predicted I, after this happened, I predicted that not much good would change would would come of it. I predicted that, I mean, I hope that they turn things around, you know, like a, a good solid backlash for good. But yeah. oftentimes the, you know, the, you know, the, the liberals or the, mm-hmm. the female minded people will come in and swoop in and pretend to solve it with some emotional so, fo- or namby oh, pamby yeah. solution oh, yeah. that doesn't really yeah, yeah. clean up yeah, the area. They have a history of doing that. Right. Uh, Kind of look at, oh, you know, they uh, they sit there and they complain and they're victims and yeah, everybody hurt us and stuff like that and just like this Juneteenth thing, uh, they, well, I've never celebrated that. Right, it's just a couple of black people that actually didn't know how to read. Yeah, or you know, before we had a big media, we didn't have a lot of media, and, and news didn't travel as fast. And, right, um, in certain areas of the country at the time, uh, I, I, I actually don't see where that's a celebration. You know, and right, so I, I've, I've never celebrated that, but um, they've had uh, a few um, Juneteenth celebrations and I think Washington DC had some I was checking on Lord Grimm uh last night to see if he was okay. Uh they'd have Oh yeah. In D C huh. Mm-hmm. So um I've never actually made it a habit of going to these events. They they're usually boring and they usually <laughs> turn out somebody's gonna get hurt. Yeah. And uh some just uh had um some relatives that visited the week this weekend and everything, and he seen a uh, Trump baseball cap on my dresser, and uh, he, he tried to address it and everything. Of course, you know I blew him out of the water. He was taking in water real fast. I says, "Well, you know, I mean, really, if you really think about it, any black people, any black folks that were about something, they were all Republicans. And if you look at it, it's like exactly." Uh-huh. 100 years after 1865, and it went all the way 100 years. They were all Republicans, and then they, all of a sudden, 1965 hit, all hell broke loose. Wow. But we got a, a real problem. Uh, it's not even just the blacks right now. It's there uh, had a story about the uh, fathers in the household. Um, the numbers are dwindling. <laughs> Terrible. Not good, man. Oh, it's- Pretty bad, man. Yeah. It's pretty bad, and these these these, these youngsters are uh, pretty lost. Yeah, pretty lost. No, it's, it's that's so true, and it's been generation after generation. It's funny how fast yeah. things have changed. People's mindset about life has mm-hmm. changed so much. Yeah. in the past, it's, oh, it's incredible, man. I mean, they, decade and the, decades. The, the things that they're teaching these young kids, uh, it's like it's a, I know. it's designed. You know, it is designed, James, because it's like you you get a generation of kindergartens and kindergartners and uh, you, you just keep changing them over and you keep right. having uh, trannies and gay people uh, teaching them. You know, I, I, evil is more clever than, than we are. And uh, yeah. good is more clever than, than evil, too, though. That's Sim- true. In, a, in a simple way, though. Right. So it's kind right. of like I how, mean, you know how Trump would confound the people? Mm-hmm. Just by being yeah. his normal self, and they kind of shot themselves in the foot sometimes, trying to, yeah, to uh, go after him. But he apparently wasn't uh, quite good enough to I, I, hold I on to it. I just don't understand why they, 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 yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't understand why they don't see what happened to them as a community. In, in they, you know, they, they rushed to the north. Uh, of course, Detroit, Chicago, and New, and New York. They rushed to the they rushed to the north from the deep south. Uh huh. And but, they're not better off for it. No, they they they. They're worse I mean, off. There was some things up in the north, like Detroit and Chicago, was like a gold mine for right. up Jobs. and coming families because of the industrial. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that quickly dwindled, and 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 they 
had a documentary about Chicago's situation. Uh, some people don't realize that Chicago at one time was like 60% of Chicago was really, really nice, nice cut lawns and yeah, beautiful I've, homes. And I've heard uh, that only that mainly the south side of Chicago right now the is the worst part. South side of Chicago to this right. day. And, and so what happens is the Section 8 voucher, because they, they, they found out that uh, that those high-rise uh, projects were very dangerous and they were just roach-infested places that were not good for people, and uh, they blew them up. Wow. When they blew them up, they uh, issued out uh, vouchers to uh, the families. Once they issued out those vouchers, those... Um, those families spread out throughout the um, city. Oh, and so it was like redistribution of ghetto. Right. So oh. then what happens is they, they the good parts of Chicago yep. suddenly have somebody, or, yeah, you know, got a few families in their neighborhoods that don't know how to conduct themselves, and <sighs> they stick out like a sore thumb. Right. And you move three more families and then they stick out like a sore thumb and you get three more families and then next thing you know you got a neighborhood that is actually completely uh, changed man that's horrific yeah and obama's that, hud was trying to do know. that yeah. oh yeah yeah he was he was Big the time. one you were, yeah, yeah yeah um jesse's group jesse jackson's group and those low lives uh-huh. and and uh, uh who was the the people in the nation of islam they they were involved uh in the early days with that oh. but the, the the late the late people are like uh kim fox and the mayor that they have now um uh, lightfoot and and but obama he really played them good. He right. played them good. He lived in the South Side. He actually lived in the South Side, and he was like a... Community uh, organizer. Uh, like Cecil Williams. Yeah, he was like that man. And he played on the old ladies and the older retired people, oh. and he climbed that ladder. Smooth-talking and, and, commie. <laughs> oh, he, he did a good job on him, man. Terrible. As soon as he... Actually, it was bad when he was there. And to his advantage, he climbed the ladder with these situations. But when he went to the White House, their area, he just abandoned them all the way. Yeah. Their area got wow. three times worse. So he he pimped them out, James. He pimped them out good, you know. And then there's some, some other stuff that came along about Obama with the gay guy. Oh, yeah, uh, I don't know. They, but... Yeah, that's, that's starting to come out. He's, I've seen some footage on him. He, he actually just threw it on out there. You know, he says, yeah, we have uh, some sexual relationships and everything. Well, I don't know about that, man. I I don't, I don't either, but, you know, I've looked at it and I'm like. Hasn't that guy got, didn't that guy get killed or died? One of them got killed, man. I was like, this is, this is deeper. This is deeper because I remember Well, I don't know because it's not uncommon for those guys to get themselves killed. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I appreciate it, William. Yeah. Great call. Yeah, so man. my condolences to you guys and to especially you, man, and your friend and everything. So Yeah. Yeah. All right. Almost man. white history month for you. Indeed. Get ready. Yeah. Love right. for the white people. Love white people. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. All right, you as well. Yes. Uh white history month. Because the rest of the months are not white history month. They are anti white history month. You're learned you're you're learned. You're uh, taught to hate the whites and uh, pretend that slavery is so bad. <laughs> and it was such a big deal. Well, I guess it was it was a kind of a big deal. Slavery was kind of a big deal. <laughs> you know, uh, let me quickly get to Richard in North Carolina. He's on the line, wants to talk Juneteenth. How are you doing, Richard? Hey, my white brother, what's going on? <laughs> doing fine. Yeah, you know, you know what? Happy, uh, pre-happy uh, White History Month. Thank you, man. Happy Father's yeah, Day to you. Yeah, and happy, happy real man uh, day. Are you a father? Uh, if you can, if you consider having cats, yeah. Oh, one of those. You're a yeah, cat well, lady, d- dad. Uh, well, you know it's better than <laughs> the uh, girl I was dating for a short while, who, who's going to die with, live and die with cats, and never marry anybody. You you were d- you were dating a girl who was going to live and die with cats and never marry anybody. 
Well, I mean, I mean, you know, I said now I'm saying that because he turned out that now I can see why he was in the situation he was in before. Wow. That's pretty sad. Interesting. You know, you know what she does? You know, I haven't talked to her in over Stay a Stay close to your phone, okay. Richard. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Give me a second here on that. What in the sorry world? That. Hey. He's on a speakerphone or something? Or is he no. on? No. Well. Bluetooth. Hold on. Headset. Ear pods. How's that? How's that? Much, hey. much better. What in the world? What the? Never, ever, Computer, ever. The? He <laughs> promised he wouldn't and laughed at me, says Nick. Wow. Nick ratting you out. Shameful. <laughs> Do the what the? The girl that goes, what the? You know, no, that, no, that no, no. That's Jesse's you. show. Anyway. That's Jesse's show. But anyhow, so she calls me back. She texts me back and says, I had a COVID test. And I'm just going, like, why are you telling me that? Do not get the help department on my butt i was nowhere near you <laughs> right man <laughs> you know i know but anyhow um i'm sorry about your friend i appreciate that, it man yeah yeah it, it, you know it, you know and you said that uh da's uh is going to be recalled you said or is going to be a having an attempt to get recalled people, there are people out there normal people who want to recall him so i'm sorry it is the those guys who got killed their families well, we had we had a DA that was running in the primary against our other Democratic DA that was legalized marijuana, you know, or legalized small time crime, and I'm just, right. she lost thankfully, you know. That yeah, we need like broken windows policing. I think the the liberals, you know, Huffington Post types say that broken windows policing, where they uh, go after this, this small stuff, which you you got to uh, deal with the small stuff, and that puts the uh, clamp down. Puts the smack down on the bigger stuff, potentially. Yeah, that's why I always have a problem with legalizing, like, marijuana, because it's just a slippery slope. Yeah. And anyway, I have read a report that this marijuana stuff affects people's minds and cognition, makes them slower, <laughs> duller, una- less able to focus. And I think that that's, yeah. you know, that's very convenient for the people who uh, pull fast ones on us all the time. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. we're just... Uh, Spoiled, high slaves. What a mess! Yeah, well, North Carolina tried to pass a, cam- a medical uh, marijuana bill, and it stalled in the, in the Senate, thankfully. Yeah. And I just can't believe it actually passed. Now, this was right before an election where we can get a supermajority in the state house and state senate with the Republicans. Uh-huh. And then they're pulling this, me- uh, this marijuana crap. I don't know if they're trying to pander to the to the to the. Maybe some of the moderates or the leftists, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's just I know that there's no sense to I know that there's like anti-inflammatory aspects to like the the CBD stuff that supposedly doesn't get you high; it just makes you relaxed. <laughs> Which I don't know what that means. Yeah, right. I know right. that there's like supposedly health benefits and and stuff like that, and people say, "Oh, this reefer madness thing was a, was fake," you know, where the some people who get out high on pot will go crazy and. Violent. I suspect that there's some truth to that. Oh, I believe there's some truth to that too, yeah. because you know, a drug, a, a majority effect of a drug doesn't mean it's going to affect everybody like that. Right, affect someone totally opposite. Yep, true. It it's best to be clear-minded, sober. Yeah, yeah, be totally off everything, and just yeah. be able to focus on lot, you know, on yourself and and improve yourself. Yeah. Why do you need to escape? Yep. Yeah, why, yeah. Why do you need to escape? Oh, it's so stressful. Well, maybe you should look at your own life then and, and, yeah. and, and correct those stresses. And Good try idea. to cut them out of your life. Fair enough. That's what I did with that girl. I cut her out of my life. Oh, good for you, you know, man. I, I asked her how she's doing and how's work. She says, it's work. And I'm just going, boy, $141 on this chick, and this is what she says to me. You spent $141 on her before? Overall. I mean, over four dates. Oh, okay. But I mean, but I mean, that's, that's what I get that, out of it. So you didn't go to McDonald's then, like JLP. No, I went to I went to uh, probably if you, you know the dollar signs they have on Google for pricing. I uh-huh. probably went to all two 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 dollar signs to uh, restaurants. Probably. Oh, okay, yeah. So double you were spending double digits on a yeah. I was, your spending, dates. I was spending probably like uh, <laughs> together for both of us about forty dollars after after like a good eight dollar nine dollar tip. I suppose you know, that's I not actually, too bad if you can. 
Yeah, I suppose well, I was at, people are like $114. I was at, that's yeah. nothing. <laughs> this I was dude. at VW threes and, and the girl that, that was my, was my uh, waitress was, was, was a lot more interactive than the girl I was trying to date. That's funny. I mean, she's getting paid to be, but yeah. Well, no, but I know it was genuine. You could tell, with her, it was, it was genuine. genuine. You know yeah, that? yeah, that's nice. Genuine. You know that? Because <laughs> he was looking at me, looking at her, and she seemed that my girlfriend, that girl I was dating, wasn't really interested. I think she felt pity for me, probably. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, if you don't mind my asking, Richard? Uh, 45. Okay. Well. You're going to be 46. Yeah. Hey, how's Holly doing? Is, are you still dating Holly? <laughs> no comment, but I appreciate okay. the question. Very kind. All right. Thanks for the well wishes. So, anyhow, what are you doing for Juneteenth, except for the radio show? Uh, I'm gonna. I'm actually going to the dentist. Oh. Yeah. So I hope I have beta teeth, guys. Beta back, beta teeth. Beta back. And so <laughs> you know how I broke my my. Uh, how is the office not closed? Asks Nick. <laughs> so uh, you know today is Juneteenth observed. Yesterday was June nineteenth, which is a fake federal holiday. Phony know, Joe Biden. Off. Uh, said, oh, those black people in Galveston, Texas, found out that they were free, uh, no longer slaves, and now blacks are more enslaved to their passions than ever, perhaps, in the United States You know how today. I'm spending my June teeth off for my paid holiday and getting my air conditioning fixed in my car? Good for you, man. Productive. Yeah, that's the most that's productive a productive way, white yeah. man. Yeah, see, see, the white man doesn't sit there and get, and get drunk and shoot people. You know, you want you need to eat some days and get some you know, get some productive done. Like Ex I cleaned my entire apartment today. Except for that paddock guy. That paddock guy may have gotten drunk and shot people over in Las Vegas, but we will never know so the motive. He, white? he was purportedly white. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what all. We'll never find out what happened in Vegas. Well, he's, probably, he's probably Hispanic, but he looks white, so let's call him, <laughs> let's call him Okay, yeah, he we'll just go with that. <laughs> killing, killing. Sorry, Hispanics. He shot We're... black people, right? Because he shot black people, right? No, he shot a bunch of whites at the country music festival. This was back oh. in 2017 during the Trump administration, right? Oh. Yeah, oh. no, he's, he was oh. not Hispanic. He was dating oh, no, an Asian he's... gal younger than him, and uh, he was... Oh. I, I mean, I don't know what happened. We don't know what happened. I know. I'm just wondering if it's a first-gen American nation, because those women are, 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 are so freaking entitled. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm so exotic looking. Oh, look at me. I'm so pretty. You know that? I'm so special. You know? Oh, God. Yikes. Please. Well, I just appreciate it, Richard. And, and, and pluck a girl from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good to hear from you, Richard. I appreciate it, man. You too. Take care. All right. All right. Take care. Bye. 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 Let me see if there are any super chats over here, guys, before I get back to calls. Ooh, I have an interesting call, informative perhaps, about the Fed. But uh, over here on streamlabs.com slash the hate report, you can super chat. And over there on Odyssey, uh, O-D-Y-S-E-E dot -E com slash at the hate report slash live. Uh, you can super chat there as well. But I saw something interesting. Taking care of business states over there on Odyssey. In the joint, tats on the neck and face have separate meanings. Neck means you've stabbed someone but didn't kill them. Face tats mean you've killed people with regards to gang business. And that guy had tattoos on his face. The uh, cop killer, the dirt bag, the P.O. The... Anyway, I better not. <laughs> Why anybody would hang around people with face and neck tats and don't think bad things will happen are stupid. No survival instinct. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, <laughs> taking care of business, said he saw a young kid at at a, at a uh, place the other day during his, like, uh, dart league throwing. And he's, the kid had a spider web on his elbow. He said, Where you, where'd you do time? But he said he just didn't do time. It's, it's a prison tat, right? But no, he just thought it looked cool. <laughs> anyway, never trust a guy with a tattoo on his face, including that uh, white, is he white? Is he normal white? Guy, uh, 
Post Malone, Mr. Post? Something something Post is his last name, Post Malone, that rapper? Don't trust him either. Although congrats to him for his child, even though it's out of wedlock. I guess. Are you supposed to congratulate people for children out of wedlock? That's what they're trying to do. I'm shaking my head. Remember Britney Spears got pregnant out of wedlock, but miscarriage. She's my age, 40. And sometimes women have a tough time later and later and later. Killing the uh, people. Hey, can I debate you on the weed topic? You can, you can call in with your mess about weed, Chris. <laughs> Chris M. Not this Chris. Uh, yeah, you can call in any time. Um, in the last five minutes of this first hour here, let me get to Shane in Canada. He has a tip for us all. Some of you guys know this stuff. Shane in Canada, how are you? I'm all right, bud. How are you, bud? Fine, thank you. Yeah, everything's well. Um, yeah, you were asking about the Fed there, like, was it Thursday passed or whatever? Yeah. I call on Friday. Something like that. You. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jekyll Island it was a bunch of bankers and prominent politicians and stuff. Uh, they gathered on this island. I think it's off New York or one of those, like, northeastern states. I'm not American. Okay. And uh, they gathered on Jekyll Island. It was under Woodrow Wilson, I think it was. Oh, and they got, bad guy. They, they, they came together in secret and drafted the bills and the laws and stuff to put to the Senate and the House to create the Federal Reserve and oh. robbed everybody of their gold. Wow. You said robbed yep. everybody of their goals? Yep, more or less. Meaning the, the meaning the we, the people of the United States, were robbed of our goals by them establishing the Fed? Yes. How, how does that work? What does that mean? Well, you know how uh, legal tender used to be exchangeable for so, some amount of gold when you go into a bank or whatever? Okay. Yeah, the, the establishment of the Federal Reserve after Jekyll Island and stuff like that got rid of that. and It became fiat currency. Fiat, meaning we just say that it, it's worth something, but it's not yeah, necessarily it's, backed by something intangible like itself. gold. Yeah, it, it's backed by itself, like uh, how well, it, like how many times it traded, how much is in the system and stuff like that. It's complete bollocks. Okay, wow. Very yep. interesting. Woodrow Wilson says, Robbie, Robbie over there on Facebook, shout out to the Facebook crew. Woodrow uh, Wilson the, was the king of propaganda. I heard he was I, a commie. Not a good guy know. anyway. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't know. I just know little bits and pieces of history. Jackal but. Island, J-E-K-Y-L-L, -J 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 is in yeah. uh, Glen County, Georgia, southeast Georgia, so it's one of the uh, oh, islands, okay, so. but it's one of the oh. islands off there, down in the south. Yeah, hmm. yeah they just got together, they drafted these bills in secret and proposed them to your Senate or whatever, and the Senate passed it, established the Federal Reserve, changed the U.S. Uh, currency from being gold back to nothing back, and okay. there's an interesting thing, too, with the sinking of the Titanic. A lot of the proponents that were against the inaction, uh, enacting the Federal Reserve were on the Titanic and died with the Titanic. Really? Very yep. interesting. The plot thickens. It, yeah, it's a very deep, thick plot of, like, how to rob the American people of the wealth. Yeah, so, like, when it's, when it's, uh, fiat, is that when all the inflation started to happen, or was that, or did that allow the inflation to happen? Because b back in the olden days, like, my grandpa who was born in 20, I think, 1920, my late grandpa, he would work and get like 15 cents a, a day or a week or something like that from mowing lawns or whatever. And that would, that would cover his like ice cream and uh, snacks or whatever during yeah, the Great yeah. Depression. And money, yeah, uh, money uh, cents uh, actually meant something. Yep. It, like, it, it used to mean a lot of something. But yeah. Like, they started just printing money now. It's just like, okay, well, we need more money in the system, so print more, put more on a, computer, on a digital ledger, and then that devalues the rest of the currency. I think so he it's was... It's not based on anything. I think, he was able, I think he was able to buy a used car or something for $25. <laughs> wow. Crazy, I huh? I wish I could do that. Yeah. I wish I could do that. So in, then, the, um, in the 70s, they were, they were getting homes for, like, 25 grand. 
Oh, don't get me started on that, but my mother and father bought their piece of property. It's a good few acres for just like a thousand dollars or more. Wow. Man. Oh yeah. And you it's could crazy. you could work and it uh it supported you know, one man could work and it supported everybody. But now we have two uh man the man and the women working for the most part. And so people can supposedly afford more, and so everybody needs to be working because yeah. they've raised the prices. And so just all these corrupting influences of this ill-gotten gain, people are spoiled oh, now, but yet they're it's slaves. All, it's all to ruin the economy and turn the common man on each other. That's all it is. So we're too busy pointing fingers at one another than to unify and look at the Federal Reserve and the government and be like, no, you did this to us. That's why because I really... That's why I really appreciate JLP, because even though he doesn't necessarily know all of these uh, fine details of how things went down, it's, he pushes for forgiveness so that you can calm down and see reality and not be overreacting to everything and falling into the p- finger pointing and, and oh, yeah. false division. Well, look at it this way. Like you mentioned uh, what's called like a single worker household. Like uh, it was a family, what was it called a family wage for yeah. the man back then. Yeah. <laughs> and then they put women into the workforce. Now they were, women always worked all throughout history. They right. pulled their weight. They did, they did their stuff. Yeah. But then they came up with this grand idea. It's just like, no, let's get the women and the men in each household working. Yeah. And then that will double the taxable income for, for a household. And right. then not only did it do that, it forced women and men to, to compete or try and cooperate, but basically compete right uh, in the exact same sort of environment and hemispheres. Yeah. So that's that's why you have all this crap like first, second, and third wave feminism and stuff like that, and the women are just constantly complaining about the job sites and stuff like that. Right. It, it's so different. Just so much them, poison. Like, yeah, it, it's poison. Like, like men and women aren't meant to work together like that. Sex not in out of wedlock. A environment. Yeah. yeah. Cheating. Yeah. Just all kinds of unnecessary drama. So yeah, evil. The, the, so that misguided. Was the first, that was the first step of women going, I don't need no man to keep me down. I'm strong and independent. <laughs> I'm a worker. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, you're not really strong or independent because the children you're going to have are going to need to be raised by daycare or some other crap. Where right. You should be at home helping raise them. Yeah. It's you're the one like, from Newfoundland, right? Newfoundland. Yes, I am. <laughs> yep. How do you pronounce it? Uh, we say Newfoundland, Bob, because that's, nice. just, that's our accent. <laughs> right on. <laughs> you call me yeah. Bod. <laughs> that's funny. That's cool, man. It's fun to hear you talk. And I appreciate yeah. the, uh, the uh, insight on what went down with the Fed. What a mess. Oh, no problem, man. And it yeah. goes so much deeper. Yeah, I'm sure it does. For sure. Yeah, take care now. All right, you as well. Thank you, Shane. Bye. Bye. Guys, we are past the top of the hour. It is time for some music. I disavow it. You know what? Let me play the uh, first several seconds with me on air because I kind of want to like censor some of the words. Uh, I do disavow it. It's the hidden cameras. I've been playing it all month, trolling you guys. Some of you guys have asked me, why are you playing this? It's not morally straight. It's disgusting. And I know it is. And I do disavow it. The music is nice, though, honestly. It just is. But uh, I guess music is the language of Satan. And this guy's language is Satan. So anyway, here it is. The hidden cameras. I'll talk over it a little bit, and then I'll take off and Spark leave the room. Was signed, was alive. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Kind of. I cleaned his feet oh no. Be complete. And then we'll get to calls too, guys. I drank oh from the no no from no! Heart of his meat oh my gosh! Sorry, guys. Okay, let's get out of here. I think. Uh, hopefully, that's it. <laughs> That's when the ceremony starts. I the cup to my breast as he wets my neck. There's a book and a blade to alternate. Think of the wind in his eyes and of suicide. Harper's blind, it's wedged inside. I beg and plead to be.
be underneath the man with bread who wakens me. He curls his breath and turns the dead. It winds inside to fertilize. That's when the ceremony starts. A rake and a sigh, and a veil and a thigh. The comfort brief, impure and, and sweet. Burn incense, and break the bread, and me spread his warmth in his chest. He blushes and bleeds, and breathes and feeds, the spark in his eye was sign he'd survived. Isn't this actually nice, says Willie Powell, but I do disavow. Enough hidden cameras. White History Month can't get here fast enough, says Robbie. I know. It's true. Hake wants to protect us from evil. Such a great father. <laughs> Thank you, Chase Scott. I will be getting to call, guys. I think he's singing about blank blank. Yeah, you're right, Kevin Howe. <laughs> ah, awful. Brace yourself for Hake music. Two plus minutes, says Lord Bibby 42. Indeed. Indeed. There's lots of music. I don't agree with the lyrics, nor do I like the values of the person singing, says James over there in the chat. Not to be confused with Hake. What is he singing about? Don't ask. And uh, one guy in the chat. I saw over the weekend, he, uh, in the comments said, I, I looked up the lyrics to one of those songs. Oh, don't. I guess by saying that, it makes you kind of want to do it, but don't. Anyway, Newfoundland, 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 Newfoundland. That was where that Canadian caller was from. All music is from Satan, and this is the proof, says Willie Powell. Well, guys. Thank you for bearing with me through that. I have something else for you to bear with me through. I know that's poor English, but let's hear from this guy, Tony from Toby from California. How are you doing, Toby? Tony? Good, good day, to, uh, Hank. How the heck are you? What's good about it? You are alive and kicking. Fair enough. Hey, Tony, okay. <laughs> last time we talked, you slandered me. Uh, you want to you want to apologize for slandering me? How I slandered you, sir? You don't remember slandering me? You, I guess no, you I slander not. me every day that you call in. <laughs> Fair point. Uh, so you don't remember you, slandering me? I, I thought you was a grown man. I mean, I didn't know you. You have you were dealing with your feelings. Oh, no, it has nothing to do with my feelings. Slander has nothing okay. to do with feelings. It's a matter of fact well, that you slandered me. Okay, so, I mean, you, you, you were talking about my kids, so I was, you know, I had to... No, I was talking about you. No, you talking about my kids, bro. I said that your kids don't respect you. Well, you don't know my kids, so how do you know what they respect and what they don't respect? Well, the reason I the reason I say that, and I and I do change I do change what I said to Rich, who called in from San Francisco afterwards, saying you're assuming. Yes, I was. I can only assume that your kids okay. don't respect you because you're not a respectable, okay. honest man. Okay, and I can you joke you, you joke are... around and change the subject and lie, continue, turn around and do another lie when I confront you on okay. your lies. So, okay. and you just call so, in with mess all the time. So. Uh, so I don't know how I'm you carry your norm, your life in in real life, but it doesn't. You, you don't strike me as an honorable, respectable man. Hopefully they well, do. Res hopefully they do respect you, even though you're not a well, respectable man. Well, the thing is, sir. Yeah. Assume that I was assuming that you was gay. Okay. So uh, this goes both ways. Okay, then you can continue to slander <laughs> me. And change. Okay. What's well, that? What is? What is? What is? 
what does my life have to do with how have, have to do with your kids not respecting you? Why did you why did you turn to slander when I told you the truth about yourself? And they have nothing. When you told the truth, you yeah. don't know what you're talking about. I told so you the truth, you, brother. I don't know what I'm talking about, as you say. Right. So you don't know what you're talking about, as I say. But I'm basing so it off of on? how you act. You're not basing so it off of grown. anything except for uh, so speculation. We I mean, uh, we're both grown, feeling? but you got to act grown. Can you? Can you? Can, are we dealing with feelings? I thought we were you, sa- you sound like you're dealing with feelings, so you so no, is that, no, that's why no, you, you that's why you, you turned around and slandered me. You don't want to apologize. You don't want to ask for apology. I, mean, I asked on, if man. you want to apologize, and you still haven't asked or answered be the question. Is, yeah, man, yes or sir. yes or no. A man says yes or no to whether he wants to apologize. At well, least g- you, at least give me the dignity of a yes or a no. Will you apologize for slandering me? No, it's a yes or no question, buddy. Now you act like a female. Oh, no, I'm you're sorry. asking like okay. a female. You're no, you're if, like I give you a yes or no so question. You, if, you, if you want an apology, I give you an apology because you want to act like a female. No, no, I don't uh, want an apology. If you, if you want, do you, you want to apologize for slander? For what? For what? I, for slander. That, that, that slander. Was two weeks ago. I don't know. I don't really <laughs> remember it. So uh, I moved on. I you, you do remember it because you brought it up just now. I brought it up. You just brought it up. It's a yes or no question. Are you feeling okay? It's a yes or no question. Buddy, no. do you want to apologize or no. do you not want to apologize? No. Okay, no. thank you. Thank you. Now we can move okay. on. Can we, okay, thank you. Yeah. And now what the thing is, what's going on with these shootings and chasing people out of the neighborhood? What's wrong with you white folks, huh? <laughs> this is why I say that your kids don't, don't respect you. I don't understand that, man. I mean, why a person can't make a long turn or something or, or even just ride through the neighborhood trying to get to another side of the town and then white folks, they, they come out their houses. Get out of our neighborhood. Get out of your behind here. I wish this we did that America. more. I wish. You and said you know that. They, are you saying they, that white they, people? They, they, are you saying that white people, when blacks go into their neighborhood, say, "Get out of our neighborhood"? Is that what you're saying? That's hap- what happens. That was what happened in Florida. Okay. Can okay, that happened in Florida. In Florida, white folks came out that house losing their mind. Nice. Because they see teenagers. 16 years old. Oh, good. Yeah, those are famous bands. Bad hombres. And they broke their window. I mean, this is, this is, you know what they Oh, is this where they broke their window? Was this? I wish he was 18 years old and shot him. Did I hear about this? Like, did I hear about this on some show? Like, some guy was doing donuts, like peeling out, burning out, doing a, you know, how the car. Hold on, man. Hold on. And was he, was he spinning out? Cars like that don't spin, sir. No, was he uh, peeling out? No, he was riding. Was that on the JLP show on Friday? I don't know. I heard, I heard something. Somebody, I think somebody called in and told us about uh, some blacks doing donuts. Yeah, I think it was on Friday. It was a caller on the Jesse Lee Peterson show, and then so some white threw a rock and broke the window of the vehicle, and it went into the vehicle. The rock went into the vehicle, and then people were saying, oh, it might have been a racist incident, but the guy was saying, it's, I don't see that, the the caller who called into the Jesse Lee Peterson show said, I don't see that as a racist incident because that's, he is doing donuts in the middle of the street, because you know how so frequently, in LA lately, um, over the past year or two, they've been peeling out for minutes on end, uh, in the middle of intersections. Justify your behavior, don't you? It sounds like you. You're just projecting, buddy. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, Dude, coming up with anything to justify you, you our behavior. I excuse for, for y'all behavior. That's amazing. Well, what about the, the, <laughs> the, the people having a potluck in, in uh, Alabama where Jesse's from? And, uh, I mean, they're in the 80s years old. And they had them another 80 year old come up in there and shoot them. What's up with that, man? I don't know. I hadn't heard you about that have, story. Thanks for the tip. Yes, you have. Thanks yes, for the you tip, have. buddy. You can't. You know, this was in the church. I Still do recommend, guys, church. I do recommend calling into the Jesse Lee, uh, listening to the Jesse Lee Peterson show, because uh, I don't remember whether it was second hour or what, but JLP was talking about how blacks, grown men, will just embarrass themselves, but they're too dumb to realize that they should be embarrassed and ashamed of themselves. Like, calling out every little bad thing, supposedly, that whites supposedly do. And, and turn a total blind eye to the total rot 
in their own souls, which this guy is, and uh, their own community, so-called community. If you want to call it a community, communities normally are made up of families. That's why I don't call the gays a community or the blacks a community because they're not made up of families. There's like very few families anymore. A family is a married father and mother with their children. Sometimes adopted, but anyway. I appreciate it, Tony. Nice to hear from you. Uh, I mean, women, where are you going? Why are you running? Why are you want to discuss this? What's to discuss? I don't know the stories. I, mean, I can't comment. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I mean, you, when, when a black do it, oh, y'all be on that dwelling on it for 15 minutes. But Thank when you. a white do it, y'all want to hang up. I mean, I mean, no, I, 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 covered, I covered the white Hispanic. Okay. Okay. Can, who can you, who you, killed my you cop friend. This? Can you give me 45 seconds do you wanna, on this one thing? 45 seconds? Do you want to console? Right, do you want to give your no, condolences <laughs> to me on for my thing, friend who died? 45 seconds. No, no. On one thing, you and Jesse does all the time. And y'all Christians. Get now. it off your this chest. Is, this, this is the perfect example of Christianity. Why do y'all hang up on people all the time? Uh, because it's a radio show. Saying, You're supposed to me? hang up on no, people. No, no. No, no, a radio no, 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 no. show, no, you no, hang no. up and say thank you for your call, and you keep things no, moving. No, but I'm, I'm, say, I'm weaker, so I, so I let you guys say bye. There's a time to, call, to hang up on people. people. <laughs> no, when something touch your soul that you don't want to discuss, you, y'all just hang up. No, that's your, I mean, you're that's projecting, most, buddy. That's the most ridiculous. Ridic- you don't know what you're talking about. Satan is the move I ever seen. Oh, he's, you're complaining because JLP hung up on you because you were being obstinate. You wouldn't answer yes, his yes, question. Jesse's yes, scared of me, bro. He's scared of me. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's real scared. Face. He's real scared. He he's, you're the one who's scared. He can't even answer a question. He talks all the time about how blacks can't communicate, and you're a classic example. No, come on, man. Yeah, come it's on. true. See, yeah, told, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's saying. fact. Jesse <laughs> is an old man that's. That, anyway. That, when somebody confront him with the truth, he's run. He's the runner. Oh, okay. All right. Well, nice call, okay. Tony. And you have a pleasant day. And try <laughs> not to stop hating on people, man. Make this much. You say love, love each other, but why y'all? You say love your country, but you can't love the people in it. That's a darn shame, bro. Uh, Asmodor has a super chat and says, uh, What's that? "Tony is triggered." Um, you know, uh, yes, Brandon M. I, 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 I know that. Yeah, it's gross. See, um, Brandon thing. M. Brandon M. says, "Ask Toby about the black who decapitated his white pregnant girlfriend. Did you hear about that one? Uh, well, yeah, he Did had you hear a about reason. it? Did you hear about he it? He had a reason. Yes or no? Yes, he had a reason. He had a reason to decapitate reason. his white pregnant girlfriend. That's pretty. That's, what, that, you, that's pretty low, that's Tony. That's, that's pretty a, low, no, Toby. No, 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 that yes, it is. This is why that you're going on for centuries. What blacks killing white whites? Folk, white blacks white raping and killing whites has been going on for centuries." White folks been doing that for centuries. Okay, okay? Asmodor states with a super chat, Tell Tony I celebrated Juneteenth by reporting black cookouts to the cops for the strong marijuana I, smell. <laughs> nice. I know he did. I know he <laughs> did, but tell me, it's legal in California, so it's legal. So he, he you, won't call do you smoke pot? And waste his taxpayer dollars. Do you smoke pot? Do I do what? Smoke pot. I plead the fifth like the Republican do. I plead the fifth. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell because your mind is not right. I plead the fifth, my friend. All right. <laughs> hey, but look, once again, tell your tell your listeners, don't love the flag, don't love the country, love the people in it. Have a good day. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, Kilo Alpha One says, laughing a lot. I know. Nice. Crack and Pot says, uh, taking care of business. Yeah. A joke of a person. Uh, quick super chat before I get to uh, hang tight callers. Hang tight callers. Quick super chat here from uh, streamlabs.com slash the Hake Report. Lord Bibby42 says, not Tony, T-O-N-I, Hake. Put the music back on, please. <laughs> I don't know, man. Tony is insufferable, says, uh, taking care of business. I plead the fifth of gin. <laughs> What's up, Shaggy Boy? Nice to see you, man. Shout out to Shaggy Boy. I met him over at the men's conference in Fl- Florida, last, Florida last year. Florida. (sighs) Speaking of Florida, let me cover this. It's bad. Um, Before I get to calls, 
This is a flashback. Remember that Florida so-called gay kindergarten teacher I told you about? Remember this? From March 29th, the headline from on the far-left extremist outlet, The Hill. Florida teacher, I don't want to have to hide my personal life from my students. This is from that LGBTQ mess. Um, cha- this is the far-left Hill's Changing America section, apparently run by this Brooke Migden woman. A she, her on Twitter. Women. I'm shaking my head. Editors apparently removed the original subtitle that read, Florida kindergarten teacher Corey Bernart, B-E-R-N-A-E-R-T, on Tuesday. But don't don't harass him, guys. (laughs) Uh, On Tuesday said the state's new so-called don't say gay, really parental rights and education law, will force him to keep his young students, note, five-year-olds, At arm's length. So now I searched, I went back to this article, and the the words arm's length (laughs) is no longer found anywhere on this page. (laughs) Anyway, I came across a clip of this sissy. Clip 11 from MSLSD YouTube channel, MSDNC. Man, this is a long clip, three and a half minutes. It's almost four minutes long. Florida teacher speaks out about the passage of the so-called Don't Say Gay bill. This is where Ron DeSantis said, and the Florida-based Republicans said, third graders and under, eight-year-olds and younger, uh, should not be talked to by the LGBT mess. Uh, listen to this. Listen to this report. MSNBC. Uh, joining me now is Corey Bernard, a kindergarten teacher at Barbara A. Harvey Elementary in Parrish, Florida. He is openly gay and has spoken about how uh, oh. this new law is going to impact his classroom. Corey, thank you so much for joining us this, uh, this morning. We appreciate it. Just give Keep me first your reaction for having me. Excited to, to, be here. to the Florida governor signing this um, into law. This yeah, it, you know, it, it's twofold. Put it really hits down. hard um, in my heart professionally and uh, personally both. Uh, professionally, it, it truly makes me feel like um, I am not trusted as a professional. Nope. Um, nope. I know my kindergarten standards through and through, and um, nowhere in our curriculum does it have anything about um, teaching sexual orientation or sexual identity. Um, so for them to, to say that, that, that that's happening, um, it, you know, it's kind of crazy. Um, but, but listen uh, we should be able to have discussions, and, and that's what we're encouraged to do in kindergarten. And then personally, because, um, you know, my, my kids do have questions. They want to know who the, uh, my partner is in pictures yeah. outside of my classroom, and uh. I should be able to speak to that. So, so do nope. you worry that you won't even be able to talk about your own personal home life? I mean, I, I have a child in kindergarten right now. I know exactly that my, ch- my child has two teachers, one of which has a daughter at home um, and is single. The other is married and has four children. I-, I know everything about their lives because my kid tells me. Absolutely. Absolutely. T- you you are 100% kid. correct. Um, that's Gossipy what we do kid. as educators. We build relationships with our kids. And in order to build relationships, you talk about your home life. You talk about what you do on the weekends. That's oh. building community. I It scares me death that I am not going to be able to have these conversations with my children because they're going to ask me what I did on the weekend. I don't want to have to hide that my partner and I went paddle boarding this weekend because then they ask, well, what does partner mean, Mr. Bernard? And, you know, I'm worried. Can I tell them what it means? I'm also worried for my kids. I have a little girl uh, this year who has two moms and the kids are curious about her two moms. They want to know about her two moms. You know, if they come to if they go to her and ask her about her two moms and she doesn't know what to say, they're going to come to me. And ask me, and then uh, you know. So what do I do? It just it opens up uh, for parents to really take some legal action against the schools and teachers. And I, I am afraid uh, for myself, my colleagues, and my students. How do you expect to navigate that that situation? Because for, for as a parent of a young child, I want to celebrate difference, and I want my child to celebrate differences as well, and to learn Evil about woman. them. Evil woman. Absolutely. You know, it's hard to navigate, uh, especially when you have words uh, that are uh, injecting, indoctrinating. When you have those words coming from, <laughs> um, you know, our state legislators and, our, you know, our higher government, uh, those words, uh, those are synonymous with some very hurtful words. And so words. when we think of when I think about navigating this bill, um, you know, I, I am going to be mindful, but I'm going to follow my kids' discretion and what they want to discuss. And if they 
answer me. I'm going to be true and honest to them because it's who I am. That's who you are. Corey Bernard, we celebrate who you are. Thank you. <laughs> this is who we are. MSNBC. MSLSD. MSDNC. What a sick world, huh? <laughs> I had to keep this part in. This is who we are. <laughs> It goes on and on. <laughs> uh, professionally, he says, he, I, he don't, he don't, I don't feel like I'm trusted. You're not trusted. It truly makes me feel like I am not trusted as a professional, this guy says. I know my kindergarten stu- standards through and through and nowhere in our curriculum does it have anything to teach about teaching se- so-called sexual or disorientation or gen- sexual misidentity. Florida kindergarten teacher Corey Bernard says, I'm afraid for my colleagues, myself, and my students. What a sicko. Your sex life is private, says uh, Almighty Red Skull. And it's more like sex death. Death. Because it doesn't bring life. Only the normal, actual sex brings life. Ugh. <laughs> uh, I got some super chats to read. Some of them are rich over here, guys, and the Odyssey channel. Uncle Ted 88, why do these homos all have the same physiognomy? Physiognomy. <laughs> I know, yeah, they, yeah, he just looks like that. Asmodor states, no homosexuals or feminine acting men should teach kids for any reason. Indeed. Like, if I feel like my ears are being violated and his, uh, and his presence. And same with that female. Oh, I have a kindergartner and she knows all about the personal life of my teachers. She tells, well, I don't know if she, her child is a daughter. I was assuming. Because what boy, I didn't know anything about my teachers. Mrs. Gustafson uh, supposedly died of the China virus. She must have been, like, 90-something. Um, a couple of years back. And I guess I can dox her because, uh, she's gone now. Rest in peace, Mrs. Gustafson. That was my kindergarten teacher. But I didn't know anything about her personal life. Probably an upstanding, young, uh, oldish lady. She was, like, gray-haired and old to me when I was a kid. When I went to school, the teachers were teaching. They weren't telling us about their private lives all the time. Oh, yeah, I wanted to tell my kids that my, my partner and I went paddleboarding. And as JLP pointed out, points out all the time, so-called partner, it's a radical homosexual word. Brandon M. says, it's funny how Tony and Joe love to tell you about how to tell you how to run your show when they have constantly been proven as blatant liars and a waste of space. Then when you tell them... They hit their periods early. <laughs> Start crying. <laughs> Catch Church with J.C. Lee Peterson, by the way. It's excellent. Rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Always cool. All right, anyway, that's enough subjection to that uh, dirty, dirty world. So sick. Let me get to Chris in Philadelphia. Chris, are you there? Are you there? I am. What's up, James? Are you on a speakerphone? I was hearing my voice come back, but maybe it's better now. Thank you. Yep. No, I'm just on my phone. Cool. Um, so I was calling in. I left a comment earlier about the weed thing, about uh, debating. I don't really want to debate. I just am surprised that you hold the beliefs you do about um, about marijuana. What's because, my like, belief? I, we pretty much, we what's... pretty much agree about everything else, so okay. I'm just surprised by it. What's, what's, what do you think my belief is, or what... Is my belief about weed that you disagree well, with? Well, yeah, I don't. I don't want to like. I don't want to. No, go ahead. Go ahead are. and give me your impression say, about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, where, whereas I think it should be federally legal, I do not think that you believe that that should be the case at all. Like at all. Um, I think that you have. I mean, what I don't understand is why we you don't have an issue with people like nonviolent offenders going to jail. For marijuana, where, like, I don't know, it just it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, why would we want non-violent offenders in jail along with people that are, you know, raping and and killing and and stealing all that kind of stuff? Oh, well, I don't know if they're non-violent offenders. 
Um, Let's just say, for instance, a person that's who a, that's like, like a, a buzzword that the liberals use, and you're repeating the same word that the liberals use. And I, oh, I used, get no, that, it's used that nonpartisanly. Well, it's used bipartisanly. Put it that way. And sure. Maybe tripartisanly because the libertarians like to use that too. But it's, oh I mean, uh, drugs kill. Pot doesn't tend to kill. I guess. Exactly. Uh, Other drugs is a separate story. I right. think we can talk about that. But I'm talking about marijuana. So weed specifically, specifically. especially now that it has medical purposes. That's what. Right. It's bizarre. To, let me just say this. It's Go ahead. bizarre to me that some states have medical, some states have recreational, some don't. And I get that we live in the United States. It should be a state's right thing. Uh huh. But why do we have some states where you can literally go to jail for having a tiny little bit, and in another state you can just, you know, just if you told it me or sp- use it for medical purposes. When you say it in vague ways like that, I don't know how, how true it is. Like, um, I know that there have. I would want to hear like a specific story to be able to determine whether that was right or wrong, and I would want to know like pertinent details. So, like so, my grandma had a terminal illness, let's say. Okay, but no, but this true. is a that's a fake story. That's I want to hear a real story from somebody, not a no, this not is a, a real story. This is this is my grandma. Your grandma actually. You said say. What you said? Well, let, well I'm saying say, but this is a real example that happened. Okay, what happened? What happened to your grandma? Yeah, so my grandma had a terminal illness, and I live in a state where there, at the time there was no medical or recreational, and that was something that we wanted to try, right, were some can- cannabis-derived products for her. Okay. And there was, there was absolutely no way to do that um, in the state, even for someone with a terminal illness, which to me seems pretty ridiculous. Maybe so. Might be ridiculous. I don't know. I I don't really have an opinion on the federal law. I know that... The feds make laws that they have no business making laws about. So I don't right. know if I agree or disagree about the feds. I just say that it's that it's we have a, a pothead culture and um, and that's not good for society. Uh, yeah. you, you switched yeah, your phone I, briefly there. I don't know. Something happened. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I certainly wouldn't encourage, you know, obviously anyone out there to to go ahead and start using it especially kids obviously sorry kids <laughs> um but you know i just think if you're a grown adult marijuana specifically i think you should make the decision whether or not you want to use it you know it's not it's not hurting it's not killing anyone it's not really causing any like at least no long-term effect but but, but killing is not the only we'll evil able- about it like i've I, sure. I mentioned that it has cognitive issues as gives a super chat there is a schizophrenia ec- epidemic that has occurred as a result of legalized marijuana, he says. He says, Tuck- Agreed. If you- he says Tucker has, co- has covered this. The media mostly covers it up. Weed is not harmless. And we need a society that's clear thinking and solid and not going into... I know that, that uh, alcohol and regular cigarettes are... Uh, not a good thing either, but we need to be more going more towards sober so sobriety being sober and clear thinking Man, you're messing with your phone. What's going on? Chris, I'm really not doing anything. I'm just like standing here, but okay, maybe it's because I walked by like I kind of walked by a fan uh, Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stay still okay. um, Yeah, I mean I if you have latent mental disorders like schizophrenia or something um, There are a lot of dr- drugs that can bring that out. Oh, Okay. Um, from latency, so yeah. marijuana is one, a lot of different psychedelics, um, and even some pharmaceuticals uh, will do that. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's the name of the game. If you if you don't handle it well, then it's not something you should use. Maybe you should be a professional first. Again, at the end of the day, I just think, you know, we live in the United States of America. I think we're probably better than putting people in jail for, for petty marijuana. I, mean, I don't know how petty it is, selling. man. You keep on saying that, and... And I don't know how true that is. People claim that. But, uh, man, I, when I talk to you, like, stay still or, I don't know, stay away from that fence or something. Taking care of business says DUIs went up in all states that have legalized recreational pot. Say that one more time. DUIs, driving under the influence. You know, when you, when you drive when you're high or you drive when you're drunk, those went up. Uh, in all the states that have legalized recreational pot. So it's just getting people into more trouble, not less. 
Yeah, I think people actually drive better on pot than sober, but that's a separate that's a separate point. That's ridiculous. Um, well, it, well, it's kind of a joke, but it's also kind of true. Whereas, like alcohol, you cannot drive on alcohol. The joke is that weed just makes you drive like slower and more carefully. But it, that statistic that you're pointing out is interesting. I I haven't heard that, and I don't know what that's based on, but you know, I it's, believe it. Like I believe any statistic, I guess it's, it's interesting. Uh, Asmodor has another super chat. It's causing the disorder in people. It's causing the disorder in people who don't have it to start with. He's moving the goalposts. Yeah, you, you said that they have latent so-called mental illness or whatever, and this brings that out of them. He says that yeah. it's causing it. No, that's false. Asmodor. Well, it says you, man. Uh, it's the, the point is, like, it's... I read a report yes, yesterday in a, a Harvard, which, you know, Harvard... But it was talking about how, uh, man, your phone is all messed up. It was talking about how uh, it's causing cognitive issues in people. They're not clear-minded. They're not clear-thinking. They're not focused. And um, they have messed up memory. And some of it can be reversed, typically. But I don't know, man. Are you a pothead? Uh, it's something that I have used on and off from like, I'd say 15 on Dang. and I'm 24 now. Um, oh. and I, like, I, I think that so yes, if you're that's using a yes. it every day, huh? And so that's a yes, but not every day. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, no. And it's been periods of on and off, you know, yeah. there've been years or months where I haven't. So, but I, given that that's the case, I feel like I have, you know, pretty good leg to stand on as far as knowing what it does to what well, but you but you're fed you're you, without knowing it you're you are fed propaganda like you mentioned the nonviolent drug offense thing it's like that's like a that's like a persuasion buzzword and there may be there may be some injustices that happen because we do have a corrupt system but uh it doesn't justify the weed thing like I have again I have no opinion on whether it should be a federal law or not but the reality is it is and this push to overturn it is not pushed by decent people by and large I know that there are some decent people mixed in there maybe who in my opinion maybe misguided I don't know Asmodor says 100% of driving studies showed significant impairment in drivers after a tiny amount of marijuana the caller is ridiculous, lying pothead, trying to justify his lack of discipline. Yeah, no, I, I don't argue. I don't think anyone should drive high. I'm just, it was just kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing that... Well, you uh, got to be careful with that because some people will take a joke or take a statement sure. about, okay. you know, a, gener- yeah. a generality. And uh, people will take that as permission to do it. Yeah. <laughs> people Dude, are pretty weak, man. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it, Chris. Anything else that you wanted to say? Um, no, that's all I got today. I appreciate appreciate it, man. You can call me again. All right, take care, man. You as well. Take care. Bye. Bye. Let me get to Serge in uh, Missouri on the line about my guest on on Friday. Remember I had a guest? That was the Afro-Latino. Serge in Missouri, how are you? Good, James. How are you? Fine, thank you. No man is good. Shout out to the Wrecking Crew, Nick Fuentes and Andrew England. Yes. Um, Shout yeah. out to the Wrecking I, uh, Crew. That's the Crypto Report, Asmodor and his co-hosts over there on Odyssey and uh, TKR Official on Telegram. And uh, you said, and uh, Anglin, Andrew Anglin. Yes. Nice. Nick, Nick Fuentes. Too. Right on. Andrew Anglin runs, uh, what's the website again? I sometimes go on it, uh, the internet. It, it changes every once in a while, but overall it's called uh, Daily Stormer. Right. Stormer-daily.rw is the last I saw that it was. Um, he's the guy who can't even have an internet a website in America. He has to go to Rwanda for it. Shameful. Anyway, thank you, man. Appreciate hearing from you, Serge. What's up? Thanks. Well, I... um. Normally, I don't like when you debate the bread tube fruit loops because there's nothing to gain from them, but I, I'm very proud of how you handled that crucible guy. Oh, like, cool, you man. Cuck, you didn't cuck like most right wingers usually do in order to prove how politically correct you are. Right. What, 
because he was talking about, oh, we need to like not focus on race. It's about the the gospel. My guest Pedro from the Crucible, Pedro Guzman, I think is his name, from the Crucible, interesting channel. They've had me on for different debates over time. You can check those out on the hakereport.com slash appearances. But yeah, Pedro was like, oh, I believe in the triune God and we are neither, uh, the race is basically, it's just dividing by mentioning that we're different races. And I'm like, but reality is whites are more for the decency in Christianity and they're under attack. And, uh, the blacks are, are really messed up and nobody's telling the truth to them. And so I appreciate that, man. I'm glad you yeah, enjoyed can, that. Thanks. Can, can you hear me? Or, or? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, Crucible wasn't necessarily a bad guy like these fake Christian de-radicalizers usually are, but he still pushed the same narrative of preventing the white awakening, which is still just facilitating the great replacement nonetheless, because it's designed to prevent us from uniting against the anti-white, just like how they are all united against us in the same black Hebrew Israelite Jesse Jackson Rainbow Coalition. Yeah. They want us to be. They want us to be defenseless, disarmed, disenfranchised, invaded, replaced, and occupied, just like during Reconstruction and in post-war Germany. That that's the model, and they want to just unite us by any means necessary. So all of this libertarian, colorblind nonsense is a non-starter. Yeah, that is true, man. Uh, I wonder what really happened with the Reconstruction. I didn't. I haven't read a lot about the Reconstruction, so-called. Re- what a what a sleazy communist buzzword that sounds like now. Back in the olden days, when I was first learning about that as a kid, after the Civil War, they did Reconstruction. And that sounded so nice, but now I'm like, wait a minute. You know how they're using the term build back better after destroying our country with the China virus uh, overreaction and shutdowns. Build back better. That's what Reconstruction sounds like to me. It sounds uh, like 1984 fake uh, wolves in sheep's clothing talk and uh, same thing with post-war Germany. They just wow What a mess Yeah, like if you Well, I mean you can even tell by your callers it's, it's a, like if you ask blacks what they actually want They only speak in grievances cliches and platitudes. They will never actually say it But they just want more of the same which yeah. is the slow and encro- slow black encroachment upon all things white and the yeah. expansion of all things black right and, MLK, MLK and Malcolm X were extreme examples of the censor move, and I would even say Thomas Sowell is a libertarian version of this because he blames Northern English culture for black degeneracy and violence. Oh. The same anti-white resentment in all of these people. Wow, interesting. Like, interesting take, yeah, man. I, yeah, I, I would ask Thomas Sowell, well, when has there been anything close to a white version of this current black crime wave? Yeah. Fair point. If, if we're all the same. Like, yeah, I mean... The friend-enemy distinction is inescapable, unlike what these fake Christians say. Like, let me give you an example. So you grew up near Beener, East L.A., right? (laughs) Right? Let's make it sound so bad, but yes. Well, I'm I'm also the only gringo in my workplace, so we both know very well what it's like to be a white minority with so-called extreme views. Right. We have to keep our heads down while also assimilating to the anti-white invader culture. Yeah. And sure... Sure, it's all fun and games when everything's going well. We're all friends, right? But, True. But that's always short-lived because they start speaking their senior language to each other about you and laughing at your face. And then little by little, especially the moment anything goes awry, they all close ranks and turn on you like a pack of cannibal natives in King Kong or the Cook Islanders in Mutiny on the Bounty or the Mayan Savages in Apocalypse. You get the idea. Yeah. So, and, but there is good news. Contrary to propaganda, Whites are indeed winning the demographic war of attrition, just like Russia is about to triumph in the proxy war in Ukraine against the global homo West. That would be nice. I, I don't know yeah. if Russia is the total good guys, but... Uh, it doesn't uh, matter. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm glad if the, if the NATO, globo, homo, fake American establishment, anti-American establishment can uh, take a take an L, I would be happy for that. Um, you're yeah. so right that just Satan feeds their mind. Anytime there's a conflict, they're thinking, oh, white racist, white Nazi, and it's so, it's so evil. That's why yeah. this, uh, I- you have to live in reality, 
and uh, this uh, this guy Pedro from the Crucible. I don't believe he was really. He's he's appealing to me when he should be a, exhorting those guys for hating us. <laughs> yep. And I have I have a yeah. suspicion that he is just not used to whites telling the truth like it is. So he's like sensitive to that, and so he's overreacting to that. And you'll notice that a lot of the blacks, and he's part black, right? He's a black Latino. But a lot of the blacks who are Christians or so-called conservatives or whatever, they still believe in the racism thing, and they try to try to not talk about race, and they try to accuse you of focusing on race, when in reality it's their mind that's focused on race and oversensitive to it when a white tells the truth about it. So... I think that's what was going on. He, he's more focused on it than he's letting on. That's otherwise he wouldn't overreact to it when I bring it up. Yeah, so. they don't understand that we have to react to this as recourse. Right. Because like, they're organized. We have to organize too. Yeah. And yeah. tell the truth. St- stand, stand, stand. Yeah, I um, I emailed you um, actually some some uh, pretty easy. Spreadsheet to about fertility rates by race. Okay. So like you should, uh, you, you you should uh, pull that up sometime and and let, let all the uh, black Hebrew Israelites that call into your show just see because the nice, man. white genocide is not happening. Yeah. S- send a follow up. Look- send a follow up email on that uh, so that I can find it easily. I'm pr- I'm no, kind of bad I, I actually, at one. I labeled it. I okay. labeled it. It, it. it should say um just just it's a surge and um it's a flash. I, I think I put um. S E R G E. Yeah, and white genocide in the subject. Okay, sounds good, man. Appreciate it. Good to hear from you. Sure thing. All right, take care. Okay. Uh, super chat from Asmador over there on Odyssey, O D Y S E E dot com slash at the Hake Report. An outfit that can have Vosh debate Hake on YouTube during prime time and can't get two hundred viewers has no business telling James or Jesse what will work or how to run their thing. They're losers, and their message does not resonate. Obviously, yours does. Appreciate that, Asmador. That's kind. Thank you, man. Um, but I like... I, I appreciate them for having me on, you know? No, no hatred. But, yeah, I don't think that he... Uh, he's talking about being effective. He's, t- he's just talking about being nicer. If, you know... And this... What's this triune God talk? I don't know. I think he has the uh, wrong idea about things, in my opinion. By the way, that guy on that MSLSD clip, that so-called teacher, kindergarten teacher, should not even be a kindergarten teacher, period. He's talking out of both sides of his mouth saying, I know my kindergarten standards and we don't, we don't teach sexual, orient- sexual disorientation and gender false identity. But we do have conversations. We share our lives. So this guy is talking out of both sides of his mouth. Clearly he's teaching that stuff. What a liar. Uh, speaking of lies, let me tell you about this Saudi Arabia thing before I get back to calls. Uh, from Hague News, I shared this quote that CNN gave, uh, gave me in the, in the news. We are having to look out for slogans that violate the rules of Islam and public morals like promoting homosexuality colors. Homosexuality colors. <laughs> I like that term. Uh, referring to the so-called rainbow. Targeting the young generation. Yeah, that's Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Commerce. On the Saudi government's move to seize, seize rainbow-colored toys and clothing from shops in the country's capital, Riyadh. R-I-Y-A-D-H, saying the items promote homosexuality. I wish we would do that. Authorities seized items that were bright in color, ranging from children's hair accessories, pencil cases, backpacks, to rainbow stripes, featured in crayon packets, uh, all designed for children per Saudi state-run TV channel, al Ekbaria or Baria, Ekbaria, whatever. Homosexuality is illegal in Saudi Arabia, which adheres to a strict interpretation of Sharia law. And, uh, 
I disavow Islam, I guess, but um, that sounds doesn't sound bad. Doesn't sound bad what they're doing, protecting their their kids, their younger generation. Now we have the young generation lynching lynch mobs against uh, the older generation here in America. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. It's not America. Makes me want to spit. These people that don't even believe in America. Some of them are actual normal white Americans, so-called Americans. <sighs> shameful. So shameful. Let me get to Justin in Fullerton, California, on the line. Justin, how are you doing? Are you there? Justin, going once. Come off a of mute. Oh, yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Hi, hi. Hey. Hi, I was just basically uh, calling because I heard some uh, chatter about the marijuana topic. Okay. And I think I, I think I can see two sides about some some say, right, that, that it causes it and some, some believe that it brings out the mental illness. But I think that if it's not pre-existing and it's not, let's say, inducing or causing it, it would be a deterrent. What? You're, you're breaking up now. Justin. Uh, his phone is messed up. Well, uh, he thinks that it can... I think his point is that it can cure it. Let me get... In the meantime, let me get to Art in Ohio. Been on the line forever. Art in Ohio, how you doing? I'm all right. How you doing, Hank? Doing fine. Thank you. I'm all right. Uh, did you hear about the dudes that went over there to Americans that went over there to uh, Ukraine to help them fight, and they got captured by the Russians? Uh, the Russians. Oh, I I saw a headline only. I didn't really look into it. That's funny. Well, I've seen some, I mean, I've I say that's funny. More. I don't know if it's funny, but well, it is funny because I mean they're liberals. You see what I'm saying? You don't went over there right. and allegedly fighting for. Fighting for the liberal left, or we're not pushing that agenda. I mean, you know, from a lot of stuff that I don't even seen on your show that I didn't know, or what not. Uh, and then you get captured. But the thing is, what, I, what I'm having a problem is with is it seems like why ain't the uh, Russians handling them like uh, enemy combatants? You see what I'm saying? It's like they trying to, you know. I, I mean, I'm not against America. Now I'm just saying like. Uh, they, these are war games. I mean, if you a soldier, would not either you supposed to either get killed on the field or something like you know people trying to they try to talk about like what's the word that I'm looking for negotiate a uh, trade off or something like that and it's just like well hold up I thought this is uh, war I ain't I ain't know this was uh. Martha's little teapot, and we all <laughs> sitting around, dancing around, uh, playing house and stuff. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, Russia seems to be treating them kind of nicely. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind of, kind of baited, baitishly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and it, I just, it got me, it's kind of got me like, what the heck is, what the heck is going on with, even with them? You know what I mean? I mean, I'm for America. You know what I mean? I'm in America. It ain't where you from, it's where you at. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. But, for Russia, me looking at Russia and them supposed to be on the side of good and me thinking that they're supposed to be on the side of good and they're supposed to be, you know, because uh, a lot of stuff that I'm hearing that they're doing is where they're trying to release information or we're not saying what the heck America's been doing, which we are, me, me and you, we already know what the heck America's been doing. It's just they're unleashing more stuff. To, so it's a lot of stuff comes with, in the dark comes to light, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Another thing. Well, another thing, I'm gonna get off of that. I just want to bring that to you, ten feet. Yeah. What about the, did you hear about what is Adam Schiff uh, letting the late night show host Colbert come into the uh, <laughs> into the place down there, one of the state houses down there in D.C. or something, and they got arrested. I they got arrested. I saw a headline about it. I didn't look into it. Yeah, the Stephen Colbert show. Colbert. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I forget what show he hosts now, but it's some late night liberal fake christian guy who's yeah, yeah. Uh, not that funny comedian who hates trump and pretends like he's a christian give me a break and so he so shifty adam schiff let him in or something uh, like Alexia, that Alexia, i think that i think that's the name that i heard i think i think that was his name if i ain't mistaken wow 
And so That's some of their, so the some thing. of their, they went into the Capitol building when? Was it before or after the January 6th mostly peaceful protest? After. And it was, I guess, when it was closed or something like that. But he snuck them in or something like that. I don't want to get, okay. say nothing wrong or nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just, you know. But, but it, it was basically like, collusion com- uh, in cahoots for propaganda purposes, basically. Facts. That's what we. That's what we. That's what we think, and that's what. We, that's what it sounds like to me from what I'm getting. Yeah. Okay. So what I was saying, you know, about the last time I talked, to, I think it was on Friday. I was saying about the, how the Democrats is playing or whatnot. We see what they when they had the uh, the dude try to come to Kavanaugh's house or whatnot. You know, got all these uh, Looney Tunes. They're still going to their houses. To, the dirty yeah, pro-abortion people, protesters. Yeah, and. Yeah, they're they're liberal. Uh, the uh, not oh, shoot. What it was the uh, the riddling kids. These the generation of the riddling kids. These yeah. are the ones who's doing all this, going to the houses, and they're not most emotionally uh, uh, restrained and have discipline because they ain't have no male structures. All being liberal females around them, they're liberally emotional. Right. That's who's doing all this, going up here and uh to these like a Kavanaugh's house. And what I was saying about the liberal Democrats is that, you know, uh, remember that, what was that judge's name who uh, died uh, in his bed or whatnot? Scalia. Scalia. Antonin Scalia. Scalia. Yeah. And I already was seeing stuff on YouTube back when that was happening that had me thinking that, you know, that was a skeptical how he died. It, that that did, it did, just didn't seem right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't so, know, but we, I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, too, yep. but me to speculate and see what how they're doing with this abortion stuff, they're anting it up. Yeah. So I, while I'm looking at they're anting it up, and they're coming hardball at these uh, these uh, judges and stuff, and I just want to tell Kavanaugh, they smell, they sm- they smell the fear and the uh, weakness on you, and you need to alpha up, and you True. might... Uh, True. Uh, Go invest in you some dang old guns, cause <laughs> truth be told, you need to, uh, Mr. Kavanaugh, you need to make a statement that you not, uh, you not no uh, punk. Yeah, you know that guy I mean? got arrested they... for a so-called attempted murder, allegedly. Yeah. The yeah. guy who call, he called the cops on himself. He's so off. Yeah, you know? yeah. and that's what they like. Kavanaugh they like did... people to be off, and then they yeah. say all these explode like. Uh, inflammatory things against decent, normal people, or half-decent, normal people, and that's, it's ridiculous. All right, man, yeah. I appreciate it. I gotta go. We are past time. It's good to hear from one, you. One, one more thing, one more thing. Real, real fast. Go ahead. Kat Kavanaugh, man, you, man, you got the right to care, man. You better blow their heads off, man, or do whatever, <laughs> I man. Disavow. You cannot let them think you weak, man. Right. I'll catch you later, buddy. Thank Bye. you, man. Take care. Uh, callers, we are out of time, Joe in Idaho wanted to talk about how leftists always lie, and the call, the Fullerton caller, his phone was all messed up, and speaking of that, Asmodora gave a super chat and said, why do all the people who call in to defend marijuana sound stoned and display an inability to operate a telephone? That's a fair question, Asmodor. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the support, as always. Guys, this is it. Uh, I did not get to the Title IX thing. This Thursday is, I guess, is the 50th anniversary of Title IX, which is don't discriminate against the women and girls in, like, school and education programs and sports and mess. Way back in 1972, and the Obama administration expanded it to transgenders. Well, Title IX means discrimination based on sex. Stupid. So I'll have to cover that later this week, perhaps tomorrow. Um, I cannot get to the callers. It's time to end. So uh, I appreciate it. TheHakeReport.com. I'll let you know if I'm having any upcoming appearances. None planned that I know of. Um, RebuildingTheMan.com slash church. Always excellent. And it was. Um, I think that's about it. Thank you, guys. Take care and pray for my beta teeth. Going to the dentist. Adios, all.